different kind of video. Tonight we are not playing a game, but we are doing a Q and A for the first time on the channel. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Hype SX for recommending that I do this. Um, because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have asked for questions. And I also want to give a huge shout out to everybody that asked questions in this video. Uh, if you happen to miss uh, a question uh, that you wanted to ask, definitely put it in the uh, comments down below, and I will happily type out my answers to them. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we will get into the questions now. Alright, so first question or first series of questions comes from Jack O. Lightning. He asks, uh, you've mentioned you have sort of a list for games to play. It would be cool to see the list and see what you prioritize and what games you're most likely going to continue making a series on until completion. So I do have a list. It is currently on a whiteboard on like my closet mirror. Um, I'll put up a, uh, a picture that I'll definitely take later up on screen for now. The entire right side of the whiteboard is more like personal stuff and like passwords that I can't be bothered to uh, remember. Um, but at the very top, well, at the very, very top, we have the, uh, the current sub count, which is, you know, just a little thing that I like to do. Um, just, you know, as a little reminder at where we're at and uh, how close we are to the next, like, milestone. I like doing that. Also, uh, the main series right now, we've got Cult to the Lamb. There's only ever like one main series that we'll be doing. Uh, for those unfamiliar, a main series is something that I do every three videos. So I would do a Cult to the Lamb video, and then I would do two other videos on anything else, and then another Cult to the Lamb video, and so on and so on until that's over, and then we would move on to the next main series. Uh, now the next little block uh, is reserved for long-term series. That's just something that I do uh, consistently, but uh, a lot less frequently than a main series. So Risk of Rain 2, I haven't made a video on it in like a month, but typically it would be around every two weeks or so. Anything over like two weeks for sure. Um, and all of the other things uh, below that are just different games that I'm curious to uh, try out or uh, just play again on the channel and make a video on it. Uh, there's not many, like, things that stand out. Uh, I definitely have uh, one thing in a question mark, and, and that's uh, For Honor. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to do that. I wrote that down because I sort of got back into it but just, just a very, very tiny bit. I haven't played it in a minute, so I may not actually make a video on that. Uh, yeah, there's no, like, order of importance in terms of that big block. It's just uh, a list that I can, like, start erasing from once I make uh, a video. I actually erased one of them today, which is that, uh, that empty spot you see above oxygen not included. So, yeah, that is the list that I use and look at kind of on a daily basis. Jacko Lightning's next question is uh, also, what year are you in college and what major? So, I am a, a senior in college and it is in film. Uh, that is pretty much my passion, though when I started uh, going to college. It was originally for computer engineering, which uh, I went through uh, for a year. Um, I got all the way to like calculus three, which was, that was like fine. I was never like terrible at math, but also um, my second semester is when I started uh, programming. I had an intro to programming class, and that was awful. Uh, my brain just could not wrap its itself around some of the questions and, and stuff that were asked, and it took forever. 
her to do just one assignment, and it, it took the life out of me. So, uh, one day, one of my roommates came into my, uh, my room when I lived in a dorm, uh, and they were like, hey, you, you really seem to like this, this film thing, and I'm like, you know what, you're right, and, uh, I, I dropped from, uh, engineering and pursued film, and I've been going at it for a couple years now, and I am now a senior. I'll definitely be talking a lot more about, uh, my film stuff a lot later in the video, uh, cause that will definitely come up multiple times, but yeah. Uh, next question, what has been your favorite game to play on the channel and or favorite game you've played ever? So, my favorite game ever, uh, for the longest time has been, uh, Divinity 2 Original Sin which was made by Larian Studios, the same people who made, um, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. And, basically, Divinity 2 is, honestly, while it is, like, one of the best RPGs I've ever played in my life, it's still just, like, a foundation for what Baldur's Gate 3 is. The, uh, RPG elements in both games are phenomenal. And it's the best experience that I've ever had in gaming. But Baldur's Gate 3 takes the foundation of Divinity 2. And, you know, it does change a lot of things, like, mechanics-wise. It's a lot more, like, D&D-focused. But in entirely other regards, it turns it up to the next level. So, my favorite game of all time is probably Baldur's Gate 3. And I, I feel like I have to uh, explain myself so that you know it's not just recency bias, you know. Um, it definitely deserved a uh, game of the year, and I was so excited for it because I knew about, um, because I had already played Divinity 2 before, which was my favorite game of all time. Uh, before that, though, I think my number one for a really long time was um, Dying Light. That mixed uh, the uh, the combat and story of like a Dead Island game with the uh, the parkour from Mirror's Edge, and I was so in love with it um, when it came out. Uh, I want to put emphasis on the first game, the first Dying Light specifically, because yeah. I think everybody has their opinion on the, uh, the second one, but, um, in terms of games that I've played on the channel, out of all of the games that I've played, uh, that I experienced on the channel for the first time, I think I have to give it to Inscription. That was a fantastic fucking game. Uh, I love the, uh, the card-based, like, mechanics, and the, uh, the, the, the story and how, like, creepy it was, um, and it, it, it's just one of those really clever games. There's not many of those out there, you know what I mean? Like, games that could, like, really screw with your mind. It's, uh, it's really cool, um, and I enjoyed that series a lot, and I, I see it now as, like, a really underrated, uh, series on the channel. Uh, moving on from that, Jacko Lightning also asks, uh, what's your favorite genre of games? Um, that's a good question. I, for the longest time, it was always, like, uh, turn-based strategy. I love games like, um, XCOM, like, the soldier combat, like, uh, maximize your chances of, like, hitting this certain uh, enemy, uh, and you can, like, customize your, your characters, um, and, you know, you, you take turns fighting each other. That also includes, like, card-based games like Inscription or, like, Hearthstone or anything like that. I can't really think of a whole lot right now, but, uh, ever since I discovered turn-based strategy games, um, I fell in love with them, and that, primarily started with, like, uh, XCOM 2. Other than that, I would also like to say that I really like roguelikes. Um, I feel like there have been a lot more roguelikes that have come out within the past, like, five to ten years than there ever have. There's definitely, like, uh, an increase
release of them or like an influx of them and uh, there's a lot of like different ways that they've been experimenting with that um, so uh, they're continuing uh, continuing to do a lot of like really clever stuff with that um, so roguelikes are definitely up there as well when they're done well and finally the last question from Jacko Lightning is how does it feel knowing that some people will probably fall asleep towards the end of your videos and not know what happened at all that is a fantastic question because I actually much rather prefer that someone fall asleep than not um, because at the end of the day I know that I've done my job uh, as you know an ASMR creator or an ASMR artist um, but at the same time uh, it also works in the channel's favor because say if you're watching like a playlist uh, you know if you fall asleep at the first episode then maybe you'll get through all of them in your sleep and then you'll just uh, start back at episode one where you left off I always thought that was a funny like uh, technicality to the business model so uh, yeah I I much uh, I'm, I'm very happy if someone falls asleep during the videos so uh, thank you so much Jacko Lightning for supplying uh, this video with all these questions I was actually very fearful that I wouldn't have enough questions uh, when I started this so um, thank you to everybody uh, else uh, as I continue this and the next couple questions comes from Blaze Man Plays uh, he asks, do you plan on doing any live streams in the future, and would you be willing to play any multiplayer games with subscribers? So, uh, on the, uh, the live streaming side of the question, uh, there have been a couple reasons, uh, specifically two, um, as to why I've been a little hesitant. Uh, one of those reasons is, um, when I record my videos, they have to be at, like, the right time of the day, if that makes sense. Um, that way, it sort of, like, minimizes the chances of any, like, loud sounds happening in the apartment. Like, uh, the laundry room is connected to my, uh, my actual room. It's, like, on the back wall, so if anybody runs their laundry in this, uh, four-bed uh, four bedroom apartment, then I have to pause my uh, recording, which that happens fairly often. So therefore I would have to record in the like very early AM or the very late PM. Um, that's kind of how I handle my recordings. Uh, so the timing probably wouldn't work with a lot of people um, consuming ASMR live streams. You know what I mean? And if I was streaming for like many hours at a time, there's a lot of like environmental factors that go into why, you know, that wouldn't really work a whole lot for my case. And the, uh, the second reason is more like a personal thing. Uh, and that is when I am recording, uh, I always like get uh, mucus trapped in my throat. Um, like all the time, every recording it happens, like many, many, many times, and uh, I always have to clear my throat, which is really loud, and uh, I can very obviously see when I do that whenever I'm editing the videos, so it's very easy to cut those out, you know what I mean? Um, but I can't cut it out if I'm live streaming, so I would really just need like a button that I could press to mute myself and then do my like throat clear but at the same time uh, I, would, I would be like really really worried if I you know I, I accidentally didn't mute myself or I hit the wrong button or something and I accidentally just like totally blast everybody's ears out um so yeah that's that's why I would be a little um unwilling to do uh uh, a live stream though I, I do really like the idea of it and I may try it out one day uh, but the conditions have to be like kind of perfect I'm just not really there yet um, and about your uh, uh, would you be willing to play any multiplayer games with subscribers question uh, that has always been like a super cool idea ever since like the beginning of the channel 
to do it uh, regardless of needing other people, but uh, I'm still super, super down to the idea of uh, recording a video with uh, a bunch of subscribers playing with me. I think that's such a cool idea, uh, but the only way I could really do that is if I, like, uh, managed uh, to communicate with everybody, like, uh, better, so, uh, I would probably need to, like, make a Discord for the channel, which, I, listen, I don't know if I'm there yet, um, uh, I thought about it, I, like, I have, I have it set up currently, but I, I don't know if I want to use it yet, because I don't want to run the risk of, like, disappointing someone if I don't, like, respond fast enough, or if I'm just not, like, that responsive, um, if that makes sense. So, I mean, if you guys are, like, super down with it, uh, let me know, uh, as long as you know that, uh, I I'm not, like, the perfect person, <laughs> and I don't have, like, any mods or anything, uh, the channel only has a thousand subs, but, yeah, so, shout out to Blazeman Blaze for the question, moving on, all right, and the next couple questions comes from Squids, uh, number one, what are your comfort games, uh, so, the way that I would describe a comfort game is a game that you already, like, have played before, and you pretty much know, like, everything about it, uh, but after, like, a certain amount of time, you just, like, get that itch, you know what I mean? That, that itch to go back and play, like, a whole other playthrough of it, and, uh, there are two games that I have been itching to play again, uh, even though it's been, like, a year, uh, maybe a little over that, and that is, um, XCOM 2. I love XCOM 2 so, 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 so much, um, and, uh, Prey. I also love Prey so, 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 so much. Those two games are actually on the channel, though XCOM 2 is very, very old, and, uh, unfinished as well. I always thought it was a, uh, a funny idea to just out of nowhere continue the XCOM 2 playthrough, uh, but, you know, it's way too long to do that, but at the same time, the longer it is, uh, the funnier the idea becomes. So, yeah, uh, I'm thinking about doing, like, another XCOM 2 playthrough and or Prey, um, but right now, I am in the middle of a Fallout playthrough, a Fallout 4 playthrough, um, because, you know, the, the, the Fallout show has gotten everybody to play it, uh, including myself. Anyway, next question from Squids is, what are your favorite topics to ramble about? And that is, like, an interesting question, because I don't really have, like, any specific topics that I ramble about. Uh, I typically try my absolute best to stay, like, within the realm of the game that I'm playing, if that makes sense. Um, so, like, uh, speaking about, like, the game company, the games in history, anything like that, if I know it. Uh, I love talking about games that I do know the history of and all the little tiny intricacies of. Um, other than that, I love talking about, even though I don't do it at all, I rarely ever talk about, like, my, my films and, and my, my filmmaking passions, um, uh, I do enjoy talking about it because I am, uh, pretty proud of it, and I would love for, uh, a bunch of you guys to see it, because I just want to know what you guys think of it, um, and again, we'll be talking about that later, for sure. Third question, uh, what caused you to start the channel? Uh, so this one I could split into two reasons. Uh, the first
first reason was because I genuinely thought that there wasn't enough, like, diversity of games in the, uh, the ASMR gaming community. It's a very niche section of the internet, uh, and more specifically YouTube. Um, but when I, uh, was consuming ASMR and searching up all of the different games, I started to realize that there weren't, uh, some games that, uh, were covered. I realized that some games just didn't have any coverage at all, which was really wild to me because in ASMR, there's pretty much like a roleplay video for anything. Uh, it's the same thing with like Nightcore, if that makes sense, if anybody gets that. Um, so I originally set out to uh, create this like really big library of all these different games that may or may not be covered by, you know, the top tier artists or any artists in general. And uh, one of the games that definitely fit in that niche is uh, my Risk of Rain series. I don't know if there is anybody that also makes Risk of Rain 2 videos. If there is, I need to collab with them immediately. But as it stands, there aren't many people that do that. So, uh, yeah, the second reason as to why I originally started the channel is because uh, at the time it was like a summer. It was like a summer I was spending away from college, so I was in my hometown. And uh, I wasn't doing a whole lot. I wasn't like working. Um, and I was just playing video games all day, every day. And at a certain point, I started to get this like feeling of worthlessness, if that makes sense. Because I was just, I was just bed rotting or chair game rotting, um, just playing video games all day. Because, uh, you know, that's, that's my hobby. That's what I've had for my whole life. And once I was like doing nothing, uh, I started to feel awful, so, uh, I started this channel, uh, combining, combined with the, uh, the, the first reason in order to start doing something, uh, productive with my hobby, um, and it was a fantastic decision because it's taken my hobby and, uh, I've been able to play games that I normally wouldn't have played if it weren't for uh, the channel, if that makes sense. There's there's so many games that I've played for the channel uh, that has been really, really good for me as a, uh, a gamer. Um, it's really broadened my, uh, my perspective uh, by a lot, and not only can I share all of these experiences with all of you guys, but ever since I hit a thousand subscribers, I've been able to monetize my videos, and that is absolutely insane. I never thought I would actually be able to earn money off of a hobby, and granted, it's, it's not like a fortune that I'm making, but the fact that it's any money at all is Un unfathomable to me. Um, so I just gotta give a, a, a very quick thank you to all of you guys for making uh, a dream come true, honestly. Uh, I remember in like very early elementary school, I wrote down that a dream job of mine would be to be a YouTuber, and I got points taken off because uh, the teacher said, you can't, that's not a job, uh, and, yeah, that's just hilarious to me. Um, uh, the final question from Squids is, why is the channel secret? So, at this point, I like to joke about how unsecretive this channel really is, because I, I do talk about, like, my personal life sometimes, and uh, I do all 
also like talk to other people about the channel um, and there are some people that do know uh, exactly what this channel is uh, but there are plenty of people that don't and uh, the reason why it's called what it is is because when I started the channel uh, it was mainly I, I named it that because I was a little shy about people knowing that I had a secret ASMR gaming channel and uh, you know I was, I was a little shy I didn't want it like to be connected to uh, my quote unquote brand which I didn't want it connected to my username is what I mean which the striker username that I use in all of my uh, my gaming videos is the same username that I use for everything Instagram uh, my personal YouTube channel uh, Twitter uh, everything um, so I didn't want it connected to that so I just created this really cringe name that I I, I still really do like uh, although I can call it cringe I still like it a lot um, and all that the uh, the channel uh, the, the channel name the only purpose that it serves at this point is um, just like a joke uh, and that joke goes like uh, let's say I have a friend just just uh, imagine that I have a friend that does not know about the channel um, and I tell them I like let it slip that I have a uh, secret ASMR channel and they're like, what? No way. Uh, what is it? And I'm like, no, nope, can't tell you. It's a, it's my secret ASMR channel. And then I, I, I give them a little hint and say, it's a gaming channel. And they're like, what? No way. Uh, so why won't you tell me what it is? And I'm like, no, nope, I'm not going to tell you because it's my secret ASMR gaming channel. There you go. That's the joke. Uh, so yeah, I haven't pulled that exact joke yet on one of my friends but uh I've, i'm i'm getting there i'm getting really close it's it's one of those like hidden in plain sight kind of jokes so yeah a uh, special shout out to squids for providing me with those questions to answer thank you so much uh this next question comes from billy bob joe 3253 and he asks, what's your real name, address, social security number, girlfriend or boyfriend name, parent's name, credit card number, the digits at the back, and your favorite color? Well, I'm going to drop a, another spoiler here and reveal that uh, Billy Bob Joe is one of my uh, friends that do know about the channel. I feel like it's fair to reveal it just this one time because of the, the nature of the video. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, he always leaves like really stupid ass comments and I most of the time reply to them, um, which must look really, really, really weird to everybody else who don't know the joke. So now you guys have been let in on the joke. Um, uh, my favorite color though is red. Uh, I'm not really gonna answer any of the other ones, so thank you, Billy Bob Joe 3253. All right, and this next uh, series of questions comes from Hype SX, uh, also known as Broken Mane. See, the thing is, every time I see a, a comment, it always shows me like the the username handle, not the channel name of uh, your YouTube. So I don't know. Uh, if hype sx is uh, what you want me to call you or broken main I have no idea um, but he asks a couple questions uh, number one what are you doing currently like job or university slash school uh, like I said before I am currently in college for uh, film I am an aspiring filmmaker and uh, I primarily try to uh, get as much experience as I can in uh, lighting. Uh, I think that's very important and uh, not a lot of people uh, put that much investment into it. So I really do like lighting and I also like assistant directing as well as producing films. Um, next question, what is your motivation to keep up the content? So ever 
since the beginning of the channel, uh, I've always said as long as there is one person that is consuming the content and uh, enjoying it and telling me that they enjoy it, uh, that's plenty enough reason for me to keep going. Um, and that has always stayed true uh, to this day. Uh, of course, I love seeing the channel improve, uh, get more numbers. That, that's always like uh, a, a very awesome like dopamine rush. I like always constantly check the uh, the channel like every day, almost at like every hour. I'm scrolling through my analytics to see how it's doing. It's a uh, it's a very fun. Uh, the third question is, what upcoming games are you hyped about the most? So I actually had to type a couple things down, uh, and one of the things that I did type down was, um, uh, I was very excited for Hades 2, um, which is really funny because, uh, I wrote this down, like, the day of, but right before Hades 2, uh, released. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, I think that's hilarious, um, but also I could still say that I'm very excited for, uh, its full release, because it got released on, um, Early Access, uh, as a recording yesterday. Um, other games that I'm, uh, very much excited for, uh, I have to mention GTA 6, not only because it's like the most anticipated game in all of gaming history, but it also takes place in Florida, which, I'm gonna drop another spoiler here, is where I live and has uh, have always lived uh, my whole life. Um, so not only is uh, the city that I live in right now probably gonna be in the game, but so is my hometown in Florida. And I am so, so, so excited to see the, uh, the Florida representation, the Floridian uh, vibe. So yeah, uh, other games that I'm pretty excited for, uh, Killing Floor 3 should be coming out pretty soon. I remember that got announced not too long ago. Uh, I love Killing Floor 2. I think uh, it's got its own like niche and vibe, uh, and that's also sort of like a comfort game, though I don't play it a whole lot. I love the, uh, the progression in that game, and I love that it still, to this day, has like a cult following, you know? Uh, also, I hear that Slay the Spire 2 is a thing, and that will be coming out pretty soon. So, uh, I'm pretty excited for that, even though I haven't played much of, uh, the first Slay the Spire. I do have a video on the first game, though, if you want to check that out. Uh, HypeSX also asked, what's your favorite game? Like I said before, uh, it's a toss-up between Divinity 2 and, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, for sure. Uh, HypeSX also asks, when will the next drunk ASMR drop? So, I've got a little bit of, uh, I gotta, I gotta drop some context and a little bit of, uh, story here. Um, so I have a very, very small playlist, uh, consisting of two videos where I did, uh, a drinking game to, uh, a couple games, and I recorded, uh, me doing this in ASMR for, like, a couple hours each. Uh, that was very fun, and, uh, for my third, uh, edition of, uh, Drunk ASMR, I put out a poll for people to vote on, and one of the, uh, the options was Elden Ring, uh, and this was, like, a year ago, probably even more than that, uh, probably way over a year at this point when I, uh, released this poll, and I think as of right now, it's got, like, 64 votes or something like that, and, uh, Elden Ring won, uh, it won back then, and it still is, uh, very much the winner, so, uh, when I saw that, I sort of, like, uh, I don't know, 
really gone around to it. I think the main reason why is because I just didn't really want to get back into Elden, uh, Elden Ring. I think the main reason why is because I didn't really want to get back into Elden Ring because I already had like a playthrough and I didn't want to play the, the, the beginning again. So, uh, yeah, I haven't done a drunk ASMR since then, uh, even though I really do like the idea of it. And uh, recently, I've also kind of put it off because um, I was a little worried about my health, but uh, I, I am completely fine. Uh, I just like to worry a lot. Um, and uh, lately, I've been doing a lot of stuff to make sure I am very healthy and I'm, I'm A-OK. -okay. And uh, Hype SX is uh, a huge uh, uh, encourager or proponent of the uh, drunk ASMR. Uh, he uh, dropped a comment not too long ago saying, like, this is day 50 of me waiting for the Elden Ring drunk ASMR. And I thought that was hilarious. And I still haven't, like, uh, made it for him. Uh, but I do have a little announcement for Hype SX specifically, and that is the Elden Ring Drunk ASMR has already been recorded, and it will be coming out very soon. I'm sure he is very excited for that. Um, the only reason I, I did it is because of Hype SX. So, huge shout out to you. Uh, next question from Hype SX. Uh, what is your age if not too personal? I don't think that's personal. Uh, uh, I don't think that's too personal, uh, considering I already said I was a senior in college. I am 22 years old. I turned uh, 22 in January, so it's still pretty uh, fresh to me. Um, what are your future plans in life and on the channel? Uh, so, in life, again, I want to be a filmmaker. I already said what uh, I specifically want to do. Um, but, you know, if, if I can land any job and get paid for it as a filmmaker, any any job in filmmaking, I, I basically won. It's not easy at all to get into the film industry. It's, it's very scary to put everything into uh, that because just like any industry out there, um, it's all about the people you know. And uh, the film industry is all the people you know, 100%. And uh, there's no like application out there uh, to be on a film set, you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's really, you just gotta, you gotta carve your own path, and that's what I'm currently trying to do. Uh, my goal is to, uh, with my, my friends and my partnerships, uh, to make as many great films as possible and get them out to as many uh, film festivals as possible because that is how you gain recognition in the industry and you just got to meet the right people so there's a lot of luck involved so that is my uh my plan for my career uh, my potential career but for the channel my plans for the channel is to just keep going and do bigger things and better things uh, I want to do more collabs with uh, the same people as well as new people and just uh, it's it's a cool idea to sort of uh, unite the ASMR gaming community because there's only like a few of us it'd be really cool to get them all together you know what I mean um, but yeah a huge shout out to Hype SX 
I uh, am very excited for you to see the drunk ASMR come back. Um, so yeah. Alright, so these next few questions come from uh, Hunter Whispers. He is a fellow ASM artist that I did my first ever uh, collaboration with. So if you haven't seen that, definitely take a look at it and definitely uh, check out his channel. But he says, uh, for one, what is your favorite animal to see at the zoo? Uh, you know what? I've never been to a zoo, uh, like a proper, like only zoo. Um, but I, like I said, I do live in Florida. Therefore, I have been to uh, uh, like theme parks, like uh, Bush Gardens and um, Sea World. I've definitely been to Sea World, and uh, in elementary school. We had a field trip uh, to SeaWorld where we stayed overnight in the um, the, the dolphin uh, viewing spot. And uh, when we woke up, the uh, the dolphins were, were, were fucking each other. So um, our guide was like telling us like, oh, that's their that's their uh, lower dorsal fin. Did you know that dolphins had dicks? Because I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, they are mammals, but, you know, so, yeah, if anything, I, I think I would say dolphins. Because that's the only animal I remember seeing at a uh, theme park in an enclosure. So, uh, yeah. Um, second question from Hunter is, are you a pineapple on pizza guy? Um, I've never tried it, and to be honest, I don't know if I ever will. I don't know if I'm ever going to have that opportunity unless I buy it myself, which, again, I'm not there yet, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, uh, third question, and I really like this one. He says, what's your typical bedtime routine? And I really, really like this question because if you know me personally, you know that I have one of the worst sleep schedules of, of anyone you've ever met. If I'm not like consistently working or going to school or having like this daily routine where I need to get out of the house, you know that I will be going to sleep at 5 to 6 in the morning and waking up at like 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, so I'm very notorious for having a very bad uh, sleep schedule and that has always been because of video games. Well, it's because of me, but it's also because I love video games that much that I just... I. I refuse to get off of them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, next question. If you could live anywhere, what would be your ideal country climate? Um, honestly, my favorite temperature, and I'm talking like Fahrenheit, um, is in like the 60s. I really, really, really like that weather. So... I mean, I'm a Floridian, so that might be warmer than what the the, the colder climate people uh, think is cold. But that is that's what I think is good uh, in terms of uh, anything else. I think I'd like to have some pretty uh, good health care. I would like that a lot. Um, next question from Hunter is, do you have a favorite genre of movie? I mean, not exactly. As long as your writing is beautiful, then you have my heart. That's that's basically how I uh, treat all uh, films. Uh, I can appreciate anything from any kind of film. I am a college student, and I see a lot of really, really, really bad films, but I can at the very least compliment something from every single one. Um, 
question from Hunter. What is your favorite TV show, current or past? So, as of right now, I am watching... Well, I watch a lot of anime. Like, that's... It's kind of, like, exclusively anime. Uh, right now, I am watching Kaiju Number 8 as it's coming out. That anime is phenomenal. I read it a while ago, and uh, I was pretty excited for it to come out, and the animation and the music is just f phenomenal. It's amazing, man. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm on like part six of JoJo's. Um, I also read Chainsaw Man, so I know that when it does come out uh, in anime form, in TV show form rather, uh, it will be one of the best ever, and I stand by that. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen was also amazing. I had also read that before uh, season two came out, and that was great. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm a huge One Piece fan, uh, and I, I, I watch a lot. There's a lot of anime and manga that I consume as of late, but um, other than uh, anime and manga, I would say uh, in terms of live action, both me and Hunter actually watched the, uh, the Fallout TV show. Um, not together, but we know that uh, we have <laughs> both watched it, um, and we rate it pretty damn high. Uh, the only thing I would say, or the only thing I would criticize about it is that they honestly could have wrapped up um, the whole story in the first season if they just had, like, one more episode uh, without spoiling anything. But um, other than that, uh, when the first season of The Boys came out, I was all over it, man. I watched it over and over and over uh, to the point that I could pretty much, like, recite the entire uh, show, or the entire season. Um, if I was watching it, I could say everybody's lines as they were saying it. Um, but that was before they started drawing things out with many, many, many seasons um, and spinoffs. Some of it's pretty good, but yeah, they really like drawing out their stuff, and I really hope they don't do that to Fallout. But anyway, um, thank you so much to uh, Hunter for giving me uh, some really good questions. All right, and finally, we have Olivia asking a few questions. Number one, are there any quote-unquote popular games that you dislike and why? I like this question a lot because I get to cut loose a little bit on the gaming industry. Uh, for one, I really, really despise the Call of Duty franchise um, because uh, they've been on a very steady decline for a very long time, but they actually had a really, really good comeback, in my opinion, when they dropped uh, the Modern Warfare remake. I had a lot of good memories on that game, and uh, I gotta say, they ruined it by making uh, two sequels out of that. I will say that I fell for the uh, Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I bought it at full price, and uh, I really wish I didn't, uh, because there was not much that they added to the game. And uh, fortunately, I got out uh, before they released uh, Modern Warfare 3. And at this point, I'm standing at the sidelines, pointing and laughing at, uh, I think it's Activision Blizzard that have been making the, the newest Call of Duties, right? I'm not exactly, like, 100% on that. But, um, yeah. Uh, I remember seeing a headline, uh, basically saying, like, people couldn't access Modern Warfare 3 because there was a glitch that said that they needed the, um, uh, the Modern Warfare 2 disc, which is hilarious, and it really goes to show, uh, how much of a, a clone and copy, uh, these, uh, new installments are. And, um, I remember seeing that Modern Warfare
Warfare 3 was just like their campaign was all Warzone, uh, as well as the Zombies mode, which uh, had me particularly super pissed because um, Modern Warfare never had uh, Zombies. They never had a Zombies mode. And, uh, like, ever in uh, the, the history of the Call of Duty franchise. And, again, it goes to show that they really needed zombies in order to drive in uh, more people. Uh, and I fucking hate them. Speaking of Activision Blizzard, though, um, I really, really, really despise the uh, company, um, Activision Blizzard, because they have a really, really bad, um, uh, uh, they're, like, notorious for, like, really bad things that they do, uh, in the workplace, like, um, uh, sexually assaulting women in the workplace, and they're, like, frat culture, uh, I hate Bobby Kotick, I'm glad that he stepped down, and, uh, yeah, that's why I've always had, like, a love-hate relationship with, um, Overwatch and, uh, Blizzard games. But, uh, yeah, uh, other than that, um, Ubisoft is, uh, pretty under fire right now. Uh, not only did they release, uh, Skull and Bones, which absolutely tanked from what I hear, but, um, they also just... Uh, removed the crew that, uh, that racing game, which I actually own a copy of. Uh, they removed it from, uh, stores, and I think they also, like, made it so that you just can't play it anymore, no matter what. Even if you own the game, you can't play it. Um, which is terrible. Um, and it's sparked this huge, like, uh, preserve the games sort of movement, which is great. I like that it's, uh, sparked this movement, but, yeah, fuck Ubisoft for, um, doing that. Uh, they are also the ones that are, um, trying to get people to, uh, get behind the whole, like, you should be used to not, like, owning your games, and you should play games under a subscription. So, yeah. Uh, other than those companies that I hate with a passion, I would say, um, there's games that I've, I've, like, never touched ever, and I, I can't really speak on them. Uh, those would be, like, the sports games that come out, like, every year, so, like, uh, NBA 2K, um, Madden, as well as, like, the other ones, like FIFA. I never really played those games, and, uh, yeah, I can't really say much about them, but yeah, yeah, that was a great question. Um, next question from Olivia is, what is your next goal from, uh, for the channel? Uh, I don't actually know at this point, uh, a, a big general, um, goal would be to get to 2,000 subscribers. That would be, uh, fantastic, um, and honestly, we're getting there, I feel... Like we're getting there quicker than normal, there than well not normal, but uh, quicker than before, which is very 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 cool to see. Um, other than that, uh, like I said before, I want to do more collabs with uh, more artists, and uh, I want to do more with the artists that I've already done collaborations with. Uh, shout out Hunter <laughs> from the last question. Um, but yeah, uh, next question from Olivia, what is something you're proud of? I gotta say thank you for allowing me to talk about stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, because, I mean, I don't have a ton of stuff, but, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I can now speak about, you know, uh, some things that I am prideful for to all of you guys. Uh, number one, I gotta say, this, this channel, I am super, super proud of. Uh, I'm very happy that I've stuck to, like, what I set out to do originally, um, which
churches like make this very big uh, library of like very high variety video games um, video game ASMR and I'm so proud of this channel that I've like been able to tell other people that that like like drop even more hints to all of my friends that I have uh, this channel this ASMR channel and I even told my parents about it they don't know about this channel like they don't know how to get to it they don't know what it's like named or anything like that but uh, my dad is like super infatuated with YouTube uh, and how much money you can make with YouTube so I tell him about like Social Blade and how you can like look up what a person is like earning um, and he finds that so cool uh, and I don't know if I've told him that I've technically started making money from the channel but when he does hear that he'll be like super impressed for sure other things that I'm proud of is the, uh, the, the, the films that I've been making, that I've been helping with. Um, I've sort of dropped uh, uh, a couple like hints about what I've been doing on the channel, but just a little uh, run through it. Uh, I have a little partnership with my friends um, where we make films together, and we have a short coming out pretty soon. I think it will be pretty nice. We just need to edit it. So we'll be setting up a meeting for that pretty soon. Um, uh, also, I got the chance to play a lead role in one of my friend's uh, films. It is a feature-length film, which is really just uh, a film that's over 60 minutes. And uh, I play the main character. So, uh, I put a lot into it, and, uh, I think it's gonna come out very, very, very nicely. So, if you guys are, uh, if you guys are curious to see my acting skills, uh, or anything else in regards to film, uh, absolutely let me know. And, uh, maybe if I do end up making a Discord, I could share that with you guys privately. Uh, and we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, other things, uh, like little tiny things that I'm proud of. Uh, I haven't mentioned this on the channel yet, but I'm very proud that uh, I quit my job not too long ago. Uh, I worked at a very large, a very, very large retail chain. It was Walmart, and I fucking hated it. Uh, I was only there for a couple months, and, um, yeah, it sucked, so, uh, eventually I quit, but I earned a bit of money for myself, um, and I can live comfortably for a little bit of time before I really need a job again, um, uh, but ever since I, uh, quit, I've been going on plenty of, like, runs, uh, in the morning, I get up at, well, that varies, but at 6 a.m., I hop outside and I do a mile run every day, and, uh, I'm very proud of myself for sticking to that. Uh, I've been eating healthy, and I've been doing everything that I can to stay, uh, the, in the best shape, um, that I can be. And I strongly encourage everybody else uh, to do that, because it is really good for you in many more ways than one. Uh, anyway, thank you uh, very much, Olivia, for allowing me to spew a little bit there. Uh, she also asked, what is your favorite childhood game? Uh, I also have two answers for this. One of them is... Uh, Nickelodeon's Nicktoons Unite. Uh, I played that when I was really, really little on the, uh, the PS2. And that was just a game where you could play as um, uh, Danny Phantom, SpongeBob, uh, Timmy Turner, and Jimmy Neutron uh, from Nickelodeon. And you, it's, it's basically just like a story game and you could play as all of them. 
as you like brawl with a bunch of like monsters and you know you get to go to each uh, of their like respective uh, areas if that makes sense it's very cool there's like a spongebob level a danny phantom level a jimmy neutron one and of course a um a fairly odd parents one it's really 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 cool as a matter of fact i was so young at this time that i didn't know what the word save meant so i never knew how to uh save a game um so at that time i thought that uh, in order to get to the end of the game, you had to just sit through the whole thing. You had to play the entire thing in one sitting, rather. Uh, and that's actually where I learned how to save video games and how that worked. Uh, the other favorite childhood video game, uh, which I have actually made a video on, has to be, uh, Castle Crashers. This was my first experience on, like, the Xbox 360, I think, and uh, I have a stepbrother that's like 10 years older than I am, and he, uh, he, uh, he allowed me to play Castle Crashers with him, and I, I have this really fond uh, core memory where uh, there was like a castle that we had to get into, uh, but you had to like eat a sandwich in order to uh, beef yourself up and, and rip the the door off of the castle in order to get in and my stepbrother he wasn't my stepbrother at the time but he was like super stuck on it he didn't know how to do it um and i was like oh you gotta do this right and he's like no there's no way let's just go do this other thing and i i did i, I ate the sandwich and i i did it anyway and uh he like looked at me like i was einstein dude it was really uh, it was very foundational for me as a kid, um, that, that definitely helped, uh, with, with, like, finding my love for video games, I would say. Next question from Olivia is, uh, what is your favorite type of video to make? Um, this is, um, an interesting one, because I don't have uh, many different kinds of videos that I make. There's mainly, like, I have the main series, I have, like, one-off videos, and then I also have, like, uh, where I play the entire full game in one video, and I'm able to fit it in there. I think, while it does take a lot of time to edit the, uh, the full game in one video, kind of video. I ultimately do really like that a lot, uh, and there are a lot of really cool, um, games that I've played in under, like, five hours, under, well, less than that. I think my longest video ever was, uh, Charlie Murder, and that was a full game in one video, kind of video, and that was, uh, uh I think that was five and a half hours, which, yeah, longest video I've ever made. Um, but yeah. Uh, and finally, the last question from the last uh, person, Olivia, asks, who are your some, uh, I'm sorry, who are some of your favorite creators? Now, I'm going to assume these are uh, ASMR creators, um, but I, I've got a few, and I'm going to limit them to just uh, like gaming ASMR creators. Of course, you've got like the ASMR nerd. He's got like a fantastic voice and um, he's also very, very, very sophisticated with how he speaks and stuff. There's also uh, Jubilee Whispers. She is uh, also a fantastic ASM artist. Um, there's no wonder why she's like such a top tier in the uh, in the, the realm of ASMR gaming. Um, she does a lot of like, uh, cute games. So like games that would be, uh, more geared toward ASMR, um, as well as other like pretty popular games. 
Um, there's also one of my personal favorites is, uh, there's a creator named Rainessa ASMR. She has a fantastic, like, ASMR voice. She also does, like, One Piece uh, card pack openings from the, um, the One Piece card game. And I, I had no idea the card game was even a thing. But as soon as I found those, I, oh my god, I watched all of them. Um, she also did, like, a couple, maybe just one Hearthstone video. And that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, those are, like, my top favorite creators, uh, people that have definitely, like, inspired me, Jubilee and, uh, uh, the ASMR gaming, or the ASMR nerd, um, like, really, uh, inspired me to make the stuff that I make now, uh, as well as the ASMR gamer, I haven't watched his stuff in a while, um, but, I, I definitely consumed a lot of his stuff in, uh, in the early days of my ASMR, uh, consumption, uh, career. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, uh, again, I want to give a special, very special thank you to everybody who asked questions for this. Like I said in the beginning, I was very, uh, scared, um, that I wouldn't have enough, uh, questions for this, and yeah, I wouldn't have done this if it weren't for HypeSX asking, uh, if I'll ever be doing a Q&A, um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much, guys, again, um, I hope that my answers were pretty good, uh, pretty fulfilling, and, um, yeah, I think there's a, a few takeaways that we can take from, uh, this kind of video. Um, if you guys do want me to make a Discord for the channel, uh, I, you know, I, I can't promise that I'll always be on it or I'll be able to answer everybody, but, um, yeah, let me know and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see about it. And, uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions, definitely, uh, put them in the comments below, and, uh, I'll happily type out my answers to them down there as well. If there's any more, uh, than what was answered in this video, of course. So, um, yeah. Thank you again, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>